On our back, Tosi Oshikoya is the Chief Executive Officer at Comercial Partners Asset Management. Tosi joins me now from Lagos. Good morning, Mr. Oshikoya. Uh, good to see you. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Nancy. Good to see you too. How? You're looking all, all red today. <laughs> your, your nails and your hair are all <laughs> red as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the compliment. What 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 more can you do now? We we just did. We just did. Nothing shall, isn't it? We could just they do. Anyhow, thank you very much. Now, Tosi, the last time you were on my show, do you remember what you told me at the end? And I told you that we were going to talk about it later. I think you were on my show before. Is it before elections or after elections we spoke? Yeah, I think it was before election. Yes. Did you remember what you told me? About the FX? Yes. At the end. Yeah. And I told you that let's continue that conversation later. I'm not someone that forgets. At least my yeah. brain is still working for now. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you that it was going on, obviously. And it's unfortunate that uh, this is where we find ourselves now. Mm. So, okay, let's take it from there. There's a new management of the central bank now that the, that the president has appointed. What do you think that it can do to improve, uh, to improve Naira's value? Because... The Naira has really been depreciating. On, uh, was it last week, Thursday? I called one of the FX guys I know here in Abuja. In fact, I called him, I think, on Thursday evening. What's the Naira? Uh, what's the dollar rate? He told me 950. On Friday morning, I called. He says 958. I was like, what? You know? So how, how can this complex problem be sorted, really? Honestly, it is so bad. And I'll give you context into how bad the situation is. You know, when we did the, the unification of the FX um, regime, the framework. Everybody was excited because we thought that, oh, maybe we're going to see some moderation uh, you know, of the Naira. But what has happened in the last you know, couple of months is we are beginning to see some divergence between the INE window and the, the parallel market. The INE window today, I think, is around 760. The parallel market is about 960 or 965. So we are seeing that divergence, and what that divergence, what it does is it incentivizes people who are rent-seeking to go back into that space again, and that is going to compound how it works. So the question to your question, what should this new, you know, Dr. Cardoso-led team should do? And I think that was the mistake we made when we did the unification. I think with the unification, we should have come up with strategies of how to invite or incentivize foreign investors to come in almost at a time when you are doing the unification. So, so sorry to cut you short. Eh? And, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling now with language and words. Because with what we are seeing now, should we still be calling this thing unification? You know, because what we are seeing now is a replica of what was happening before. So Absolutely. what is the unification? There is no I&E window now. We've been told to call it a, a Nigerian foreign exchange market. So what exactly is driving this thing? Is it arbitrage? Is it still speculation? What exactly is driving this, that the Naira right now, that the head is off? I think it's, it's very simple. It's illiquidity, FX illiquidity. Okay. That's what's driving it. FX illiquidity and the fact that Nigeria still continues to be an import-dependent country. Our import bill continues to be on the rise. So as a consuming nation, reliant on you know um, bringing in goods and services, from other countries, we will continue to buy those. And that's the major problem right now. Right now, we don't have any supply channel that could help us to beef up you know, our, ex our external reserves or to help us to meet some of the demands in the market. If a lot of people are saying that uh, the president is you know, going everywhere, seeking for uh, international relations and political ties. I think that that's a good thing to do. Because who else can sell this country other than him? He is the number one citizen. So, Nancy, I can give you a short-term strategy, a medium and a long-term strategy. A short-term strategy would have been that we should have incentivized the foreign portfolio investors. There was a time those guys were coming into this country. That was in 2017 when we set up um, the... I think it was the, the, the fourth contract uh, framework at the, at the time by FMDQ. When that was set up, we saw that, yes, those foreign investors, particularly the FPI, the foreign portfolio investors, were coming in because they saw our, our instruments, the NARA instruments, the local investments, a lot cheaper. 
And they also saw an avenue where they could take out and repatriate their funds. Today, the confidence has been completely waived, and that is where the problem is. So the first thing this team needs to do is to see how they can clear the backwards. Um, where where would they get the dollar from <laughs> to clear the backlogs? That's a good question. We don't, so, we don't print dollars. We, we get foreign inflows from oil sales and perhaps export and all of that, which is still low. So where will we get the dollars from? The foreign so trips that the president is embarking on right now, that is yeah. mid to long term because that money is not going to come in immediately. So that is mid to long term. So where are we going to get these dollars from, really? So, I mean, that's a valid point. And I'll tell you, it could be a short-term quick fix. It's a quick fix. There was a time we raised OMO in this market. If those OMOs were very attractive, perhaps some of these foreign investors could come in. What you need is in the region of five, maybe three to five billion dollars. And that's not going to happen almost you know, immediately. You will see them come in in triples. And you also need to assure them that they can take out their funds as and when they need it. That is where the pain of all of this issue at the moment. Fitzy Russell just you know, took us out from their equity indices to unclassified stuff. <laughs> it's on the back of FX illiquidity. So before you can even try to restore confidence you know, to the foreign investors, you must look for how short-term funding can come into this country. That's number one. Number two, you need to look inward. You know the major challenge we're having right now concerning our production is oil theft. Right now, we produce about 1.2 million barrels per day. We should be producing about 1.7 or 1.8. Every day, Nancy, we lose about $60 million. Today, with crude oil price at $94 per barrel, we are not benefiting from this rising oil price at all. We should be smiling to the back. $60 million, that's about $25 billion, okay, per annum, dollars, that we are just losing to oil theft. So the short-term fix would be that you need to quickly address that and arrest or arrest that situation. Make sure that is fixed. See how we can ramp up our production. If we can do that, we see some money coming in. You see some confidence being restored to the foreign investors that, oh, these guys, they are getting their acts right. Then maybe some of those guys, FPIs, can start coming in. Right now, if you look at our equities market, some of these stocks there, they're very cheap. You know, if you dollarize some of those stocks, because a few years ago, at 300 or even 400, if you brought in $10 million into the Nigeria equities market, you're talking about what? About $4 billion. Mm -hmm. But if you brought in $10 million at the new rates now of $700, even assuming $700, that's a lot of Naira. So for the same amount of dollars, you will be getting a lot more Naira, and you can go into the equities market. So the papers are equally cheap. They're equally cheap. But the challenge, again, is the equities market is not so deep. Exactly. So those guys, exactly. if they come into that market, your, st your stocks are cheap. If you look at the price to book of some of those banking stocks, they are less than one. Price to book, they are less than one. So if you dollarize them, they are relatively cheap. But the, the depth of that market is not there. So there are a lot of issues, structural issues, that this new um, CBN team would have to deal with. Overall, my concern is how to restore confidence back to the foreign investors. And I think that's one of the things that uh, you know, uh, President Bola Tinubu is doing. He certainly has a strong sense of you know, international relations and political you know, uh, diplomatic ties. Not only has he demonstrated his local cap capacity in terms of political weight locally, now he's showing us that in terms of you know, global relations, I can do the job as well. Okay. The previous okay. government did not do that. Okay, Tosi, uh, let, me, let me come in with this. The issue of Nigeria's debt, I don't know if you also saw that last week from the DMO saying that our debt now <laughs> has risen, the total public uh, stock debt, both domestic and foreign, now at 87 trillion naira, of course, because of also the securitization of the CBN ways and means advances are too 
uh, the, the federal government. So it's a seven trillion naira. How did we get here? Wow. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, but, <laughs> but no, take, a, take a look at that know. on one side. You talk about reclassification of the NGX. When I saw that too, my heart also broke. To unclassified. Yeah. We were classified as a frontier uh, market. Uh, could, not imagine, uh, you know, imagine to frontier. <laughs> Imagine to frontier, we still manage frontier. Now, unclassified, yeah, that una no get labor. <laughs> so, so, okay, so, so where do we go from here? Yeah. You know, then I think finally, uh, just three questions in one, because we have like four minutes to go. Finally, okay. outlook for MPC meeting next week, I guess Monday, Monday and Tuesday. What do you think that the outgoing management of the Central Bank of Nigeria will do? Acting Governor Shonobi with um, Aisha Ahmad, uh, Obiora, Kinsley Obiora, uh, uh, Edward Lamatek. Who is the last person? I think that's all. Yeah. That management. Yeah. What do you think they will do? Will they raise rates? Or they will just dash us something as, a, 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 you know, send off gifts to Nigerian stake, hold rates, or surprise us, reduce it? So I think they will raise rates, okay? I think they will raise rates between 25 to 50 basis points. And I'll tell you why. And it doesn't mean that um, that's action of raising rates has really uh, addressed the situation. Because we've said this a number of times, that monetary uh, uh, measures, they are not enough to address inflation. Inflation has gone up to an 18-year high of almost 26%. That's high. And the two major drivers are the food inflation, which has gone almost to 30%, and you have your energy cost as well. That has gone. I mean, you're, you're sure that, I mean, you know, Nancy, what diesel prices and, and uh, PMS prices are right now, they've all gone through the roof. So you cannot say raising rates would address those two issues. No, these are structural issues. So the monies that are being saved from fuel subsidy, it's gonna take a bit of time, but we need to use those savings for massive investment into infrastructure. One of it, if you buy if from the farm, from the farm, the farm produce coming to the market, before it gets to the market, the level of cost and the cost structure that would have gone into that farm produce before coming into the market is high as a result of infrastructure uh, deficit and transportation and logistic problems. The same thing with energy costs as well. Energy costs in itself, we don't even have control over it because the moment crude oil prices are going up, it affects us because those two markets are deregulated. So they will certainly be seen to be doing something by raising rates to 25 to 50 basis point, but that could only just, you know, barely address the situation. In fact, what that would do is probably to impact the, 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 the cost push inflation. Because you have the demand pool and the cost push. Mm -hmm. Cost push inflation means that interest rates on capital or interest or rates on capital will continue to go up. So manufacturing com companies that are hoping that, oh, Tinubu has said that, oh, we will try to moderate interest rate and bring interest rate down and see how we can channel funds to the real sector. Those guys are not in that El Dorado. They will not see it for now. Tosi, just so, before just before you go ahead, because we've got to go in the next one minute. Your response on the debt rising and the reclassification of the NGX. How do we how do we solve these issues? Nancy, I don't have any problem with raising debts. America today, their debt is all is well over their GDP. So it's it's I mean the most important thing is what do you use those debts for? Nigeria today we're still below 40% of our GDP in terms of debt to GDP. So the question is, if this government is seriously, uh, they are serious about changing the narrative and turning the fortune of this country around, then they could raise more debt. But those debts, are, they have to be channeled to infrastructure development, to capital projects. Rails, for instance, um, a lot of infrastructure power, investment even into oil and gas. We should be operating at 2.7 or 3 million barrels per day. Why can't we do that? So if you're taking those savings and you're also going to the market to borrow more, those debts must be geared for capital projects, productive projects. So we don't end up like Ghana, where you go borrow and you're not seeing any result of 
what you borrow the funds for. So I don't have any problem with borrowing at all. I think we should go ahead and borrow more. But it must be used judiciously. I'm sure that, uh, as you said, we should go ahead and borrow more. Some people will not be happy with you with that. Are you saying we should go and borrow more? I'm not scared of borrowing. You could use it's, your it's, it's what we use it yeah. for that, that, yeah, that exactly. matters. Yeah. But the, the past one that we've seen has been really for consumption, as it were. So that's where, that's where the you issue know? is. We need and to and how did we go from debt forgiveness to 87 trillion naira? And that is what really saddens me. At this, the at, last at this week, point. We need to check how much debt we raised in the last uh, eight years. It's it's mind blowing. It's president mind -blowing. Buhari was the president with the highest debt so far in history so far. in this country. It's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Thank you very much, Tosi, for uh, chatting Thank with you, me. Nancy. Let's talk again Have sometime so, soon. Yes, you too. You too. <coughs> All right. Um, I've been speaking with uh, Tosi Oshikoya, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Comercio Partners uh, Asset Management. Just before we go, we also need to tell you that U.S. Deputy uh, Treasury Secretary is in Nigeria, Wali. That's his name. That's his nickname. Uh, but he is, he is Adewale Adeyemo. He is in Nigeria. What I mean by Deputy Treasury Secretary, like Deputy Finance Minister. And, of course, he's the highest uh, Nigerian-American uh, in the U.S. Uh, cabinet. Uh, Mr. Deyemo, of course, will be meeting with U.S. investors in Nigeria. He will uh, likely also foster U.S.-Nigeria business uh, relations. We, we also saw President Tinubu uh, last week in India at the sidelines of the G20 summit, also meeting with President Joe Biden of uh, the United States. At least we had a lot of photo ops. The president is in Onga now. The question is, it's good. But what do we get from there? When he comes back, how are we going to begin to see the implementation and execution of majority of the strips? And that was what I asked her during Gilali last uh, Friday on the show. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Be the best you can be and be the change uh, that you want to see. Let's just keep on managing. Like they say, Nigeria go better, Africa go better. But yeah, Nigeria go better. We shouldn't just lose hope. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Nancy Natch is my name. Bye now.